Got that guy all welded up. Now, once I had it welded, I went ahead and filled it with water, did a water test. I did have to go back and fix a couple pinholes. These thin barrels really do suck. I see now why um, Jacob decided to use an air compressor tank and just weld it down right here. It, it would have been a hell of a lot faster. But I wanted this piece to be easily replaceable. And I still think it will be, but it is a turd welding them things together. That's, that's only a 20 gauge drum. Very, very thin material. So once I got uh, the weld all completed, I filled it up with water, water tested it, fixed my couple pinholes that I had, primered and painted around that weld because I need to start doing that on the whole thing because water testing everything, you get in surface moisture and get rust forming all over the place. But So that's all done. Then I went ahead and uh, blew out the bottom of it. And all I did was I took my flat wheel, probably a little bit of echo right there. I took my flat wheel and just ground down the outside edge until the entire floor of the drum came right out. So flush it off so it's all done and I have the start of my air inlet pipe sitting in there and before I can start building the heat exchanger that goes inside of here I need to figure out the length I need for that pipe because that's going to mount the heat exchanger and also center it inside this drum get this out of the way and I got a couple of my fittings ready we're gonna get this measured up centered not even going to bother with the measuring tape. It, it doesn't have to be that critical. As long as it's as center as you can get it inside of this opening, we'll be good. So here I've got two inch cast elbow. The other half of the nipple from when we cut it off and mounted it into the fire tube over there. So all I'm going to do, I know on my bolt pattern, I ended up with 15 inches from inside edge to inside edge of bolt hole. So I've measured up 15 inches. Seven and a half is gonna be my center mark. I have it marked right here on my pipe. I already have this threaded in as far as I can get it. Now, there's no pipe out here. I can't put a pipe wrench on it. So you can't really crank this thing down, but I just clip the edges of it in the vise, spin the 90 down as hard as I can. It doesn't need to be any tighter than that because we're gonna have silicone on these threads. Now I'm just gonna set this, center it up on that mark. And I need to cut my pipe right there. So now I can go ahead and cut my pipe off. Pull this threaded nipple end out, we'll get this welded on, put back in, then we'll have our center point for where our heat exchanger will mount to. We can start measuring and building the heat exchanger itself. Here I just got that same piece of angle iron up in the vise, lay my pipe inside of it, take my flat wheel, I'm going to brace the grinder up on the angle and just barely kiss it to the pipe and then spin the pipe around. We'll cut it off, it'll be a pretty flat cut. In this short of a pipe, run out in the thread isn't gonna matter all that much, but we'll make it as nice as we can. See our cuts joined up real nice so i was holding the pipe good and i was holding my grinder good go ahead and finish this off and we'll get that other nipple welded in place there's our finished cut pretty nice and flat go clean it up on the wire wheel be ready for welding we've got our same insert as before caulking tube wrapped in um, paper towel make sure we're butted up nice and tight insert out we're ready to weld
go. There's our inlet pipe, ready. And I'm gonna grind that down just a little bit because it's kind of ugly. You can see, nice lined up edge, nice and free flowing. Don't forget to get the oil off the threads on those before you weld them. Not worried about having anything tight right now. We're just snugging it up. Uh, looks pretty good. Maybe just a hair bit forward, but I'm fine with that. Like I said, the heat exchanger does not have to be perfect in here. More about getting that thing straight up and down and centered left, right. Because when you thread your heat exchanger down, it's eight inches in diameter, while we've got 13 and a half inches inside of this container. So even if your heat exchanger is not perfect and it's got a little bit of wobble, not a big deal. It'll still thread right down. So here I've got a heavy duty um, five inch muffler off of a diesel truck. I'm going to use this as the chamber that I'm going to build the heat exchanger into. I'm going to fillet the welds off of it, pull the core out because I'm just after this portion right here. I'll end up putting new caps on it. Uh, one of them will be a flat cap because nothing will be coming out the top. One will be a flat cap with a threaded nipple on the bottom so I can thread into our air inlet pipe. So this will now become the heat exchanger. You know, always repurposing scrap metal. That's, that's what I do. I build everything out of junk I got laying around. So I'm going to get to cutting on this thing. So now I took that muffler, and this one is stainless construction. Doesn't really matter that much. The last heat exchanger I made was out on mild steel. I actually took a drum and cut it up. <clears throat> so here's our stainless muffler. I cut the top and the bottom off of it. Now, this muffler does have baffles inside it. This one I left in place, it's not going to hurt anything. The other one, I did cut it out and I had to drill out some spot welds around the outside edge, so I actually already have those spot welds built back up. So basically, now we've just got a nice cylinder. And normally, the uh, heat exchangers in the wind keys are an 8 inch diameter or even down to a 7 inch. This happens to be 9 inch, still going to fit inside of that drum just fine. So, what we're going to do here. We're going to be forcing our incoming air going through this container. Now, on the outside of this container is going to be superheated gas. So we're going to be taking all of the wasted heat energy from the gas that's produced. We're going to heat up this cylinder and everything we put inside of it. So that as the incoming air comes through it, it's going to hit hot steel and it's going to pick up heat preheating that air before it gets down into the air inlet and over into the fire tube assembly. So to do that, we need to make the air spend a bunch of time inside of this capsule. And the way that I did that on the last one, these are just pieces of 55 gallon drum that I cut up. This is just scrap material, four or five inches long, somewhere in there. And I just got you know a big huge pile of them and I'm probably gonna need more than that. These are going to get welded in as fins and actually make the air deflect off of them. We're going to try and make that air dwell a long time inside of this heated canister to get as much preheat for the air as we can. So I'm going to be taking these little tabs, I'm going to stick a magnet on the back and drop it down inside. And the way that I did the last one, <clears throat> once I drop it down inside, I'm going to take the magnet and I'm going to turn it. So it's going to turn each one of these onto an angle. And I will line them up in a circle going around at that angle. Now, because they're going to be on an angle inside of a straight surface, that means they're actually going to be diverting the air down and through, but it's going to be coming off of one fin between another one, smacking into another one. We're going to cause as much turbulence inside of here as we can. The more turbulence we have, the more heat that it's going to get picked up. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and, like I said, I'm gonna leave this one baffle in here. That one's not gonna hurt. The reason I had to cut the other baffle out is so that I have room to get down inside of here and weld all of these fins in place. So let's get to doing that. That's about what it looks like except I still got quite a bit more to go and I still have the other side you can see maybe three quarters to an inch in between each row you can see all the heat spots where I've been welding down yep this takes a while but all we're doing is creating air turbulence it'll preheat in there time to keep this welding top two-thirds here technically actually this is the bottom bottom two-thirds here completely full of fins, ready to go. It's ready to have its cap put on, take this nipple, cut it in half, set that guy on there, weld it down and water test it. Then we can fit it into the drop box housing. But before I finish putting the fins up here, I don't know if you can see it too well on the camera, but you can see my last row is about right there right now. Here I've got half, half of a uh, pipe coupler, the other half from what we welded onto the fire tube. We know that this is gonna be located somewhere in here. We don't know exactly where yet. And we won't know that until we put the floor on here and put that pipe nipple on and thread it down. Then we'll know, you know, where we want it to come out of the heat exchanger body and we can place this guy and get it welded on. Once it's welded on, then we can finish up the last couple fins in the top. So to get any further, I need to put a floor on here here I got a piece of that 14 gauge that we cut out of the heat exchanger standoff. I'm going to get this cleaned up, weld it down on there, cut this in half, get this guy on there, and then we'll get a test fit. Now we can go through and just trim off the excess, grind it down nice and flush, cut our fitting and uh, be ready to weld it on. Anybody making an outhouse? Hang that up on the shop door. looks good, bung looks good and straight. We did weld it dead center. And if you're wondering, there's no particular reason that I chose doing a muffler. It just happened to be the right cylinder. I didn't care that it was stainless. I don't care that I'm welding mild to stainless. It doesn't bother me. As long as it seals up, that's all we needed to do. 
and exchanges heat, of course. So, I think we're ready for a water test. We can water test our fitting here, and then we can fill from the top side and water test this itself. And uh, yeah, we pass both of those water tests, then we can screw it down and figure out where our gas outlet's gonna be. Well, that's about an hour with uh, three gallons of water in it. Not a leak to be had. Now, this is the interesting part. We're talking about making dwell time. I'm gonna pour this water out into the bucket and check out how long it takes for that water to all get out of there, strictly because it has to pass through all of those fins. takes that long to pass water it's gonna take a while for the air to get through it okay now we're ready to test fit get the heat exchanger body out of the way we don't need it right now Beauty. Sitting 21 and a half inches tall. So how much room does that leave us inside the heat exchanger body? tell I don't have my 90 degree elbow perfectly vertical because we're a little bit tilted but not a big deal so that leaves us five inches at the top for our insulation cool now I need to figure out where I want to put my air inlet and then we can place it onto the heat exchanger itself that'll be later next episode